my client does wish to sign a relinquishment and assist with um, pursuing the adoption, but because there is an alleged father out there, she thinks it's, we believe it's important for her to remain involved until we've been able to resolve that issue. On uh, August 26, 2024. And I know Jayla is very young, probably hasn't had a dental yet or probably doesn't need one yet, but is everything else up to date? Everything else, all medical is up to date. Any concerns? Not at this time. Any developmental or uh, noticeable delays at this time, but they are keeping an eye on her. Has she been assessed? I do not believe that if that has been set up, but it can be set up going forward. Okay. Yeah, I'll probably order that to be done just be, just to make sure. Um, okay. Uh, is the current visitation schedule with the mother appropriate? Yes, sir. And are the visitations themselves with, with the mother appropriate? I've observed one visit so far and it was appropriate. You're not asking for any changes to visitation today? Not at this time. Um, has the mother asked for anyone else to be studied at this time? Not at this time. Okay. And you all held a family group conference and developed family plans and service that were narrowly tailored to address the concerns that brought Jayla into care? Yes, sir. Were they narrow, or were they best interest of the child for the court to make them orders? Yes. Yes, sir. Are they in the file? Um, we actually had to redo those orders once we were in the FGC. Uh, Miss Enriquez will be working abbreviated services. So those will be filed today to amend the. And did Miss Enriquez have the opportunity to participate in the creation of the plan? Yes, sir. After the plan was created, did she have the opportunity to review it and sign it? She has not. That She uh, actually didn't make the visit yesterday. That was the day she was to sign. But uh, we can get that done as well. Um, just out of curiosity, if the plan was created there, why did she not sign it when she was there? Um, because the plan was created on paper and I had to go back and revise them. Okay. And could you briefly set forth the services that Belong is asking the mother to complete in this case? Yes, the services we're asking her to complete are individual counseling, random drug testing, and an OSAR assessment. Have you discussed these with her? Yes, at the FGC. All right. Do you believe she has an understanding of what she needs to do first? Yes. And have any referrals been made yet? It will be made today. Uh, do you believe that at this time, Belong has made all reasonable efforts to make a reunification? I know it's early in the case, but do you believe that everything's been done? Yes, sir. And uh, is it safe to return the child to the mother at this time? Not at this time. Has she addressed all the concerns appropriately at this time? At this time, yes. But she has addressed the concerns or she has not? She has. Okay, so why isn't it safe to return the child to her? She would like the child to be adopted. Okay, all right, now I think I understand. And do you think the child, it's in the best interest of the child to remain in the temporary managing conservatorship of the department at this time? Yes, it is. Okay, for whatever reason, I didn't get a copy of the report, so that's why I had so many questions um, about the long-term plan. I just hadn't seen it yet. Um, Ms. Dominguez, do you have questions for Ms. Powell? Um, just a few to clarify, Your Honor. Um, so the, in the report, it said the mother and father had not been communicating with you all. When did that change? When when did they start cooperating? They started, I located the father last week, and it was about at the FGC, shortly before the FGC. So shortly before the 24th, we had the wrong telephone number for Ms. Enriquez. Okay. Now you say she wants to have the uh, child adopted why is she doing any services if that's the case? She would like to continue visitations. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. um, and do we have any home assessments done yet or are they all still pending? It is pending. It's been turned in for the home study. I believe I turned that in on the 9th, I'm sorry, the 10th of September. So we're waiting for that and information. That's on the current. Thank you. And that's on the current placement? Yes, ma'am. Thank you. Nothing further, Judge. Ms. Harris? 
Ma'am, it's been Ms. Enriquez's position that she wants placement to adopt since, that's been her position since before the child was born, correct? Correct. And you are, the departments are belong is good with the placement? Correct, yes. Are there any concerns that you think might be barriers to adoption eventually? Not at this time. And you had the wrong phone number for her, but Ms. Enriquez has been cooperative with cooperative with Belong in the department all along, correct? Yes, she has. And does it seem like this family and extended family has a, a plan for how this ends up in the long run? Yes, ma'am, they do. And is the placement related to this child's sibling in some way? Yes, ma'am. Uh, Miss Barber is the maternal, sorry, paternal aunt of Jayla's half sister. And why is it important for Belong to stay involved as opposed to dismissing the suit and just letting them pursue adoption? It's to ensure everything is going fine with Jayla and to assist them in the adoption process. And um, as you said, the mother is working services so that she can demonstrate she is safe to be around her daughter in the future, correct? Correct. And is it this family's plan for the child to know who her mother is and have her mother be around her if she's safe and appropriate? Yes, it is. No further questions, Judge. What's the termination timeline? The dismissal for the case? Well, I mean, I guess that my questions kind of revolve I, around. I can answer that if you like, Judge. It's it's a legal legal reasoning. Please. Uh, because there is um, an alleged father involved in the case and he has not been served. My client does wish to sign a relinquishment and assist with um, pursuing the adoption. But because there is an alleged father out there, she thinks it's, we believe it's important for her to remain involved until we've been able to resolve that issue. Okay, well, that makes perfect sense. I just wanted to make sure that I understood it. Um, you know, we're... Well, I'll, I'll hold off on any of that. Uh, anything from you, Mr. Brandon? Nothing, Judge. Okay. Mr. Jett? I don't have any questions for uh, Ms. Powell. Just a couple of couple of things here, Judge, if, if I may. Um, I know Mr. Brandon, Ms. Pearsall's client hasn't been served, um, and I understand we can't make any orders about him. I just ask that uh, he appear before any visitation is given for him. Once he does appear, we'd like a DNA. I think you can't order that now just yet because he's not fully in this case. Um, the other thing was, Judge, and you mentioned it, that you wanted this um, developmental um, uh, assessment. And we definitely want that based on the the short history of this uh, little girl's life. Um, and, Judge, we had a question. I believe there was a discussion at the... Uh, adversary hearing the 262 hearing about some records of um the birth and wanted to know if those had been received miss swallows indicated she doesn't have them wanted to know if anybody else did and if we could get those uh circulated that was on my list of questions that i had to um after hearing everything i've got a note from that september 5th hearing that the department was supposed to get the birth records to all parties within seven days but it doesn't sound like that happened. Ms. Powell, do you know what the deal with the birth records is? They've been requested. We have not received them. Okay. Do you have a timeline? Did they give you any kind of idea how long it would take? Um, they did not, but we can send in another request. Why don't we put it in the order? Okay. Ms. Dominguez, with the court's ordering that the birth records be distributed to the parties um, no later than October 15th. And that way, Ms. Powell, you can take that order and you can send it over, send a certified copy to the agency and let them know that you're under a timeline under the court order to get those records. I don't know that. It's, are we dealing with BBS here? 
I don't know the muted. vital statistics. Yeah, if it's vital statistics, then I don't know if it's going to make a difference, but that's the best I can do at this point is just order that they be submitted to the court within 15 days and the parties, and then hopefully that'll give you the ammunition you need to get them to move faster on that, but we'll see. Um, I don't know if we're getting pushback, Your Honor. Um, we can send like a, a separate order to them ordering the release. Well, it's not pushback that I, it's it's just um, they're they? slow. Okay. If it's final <laughs> statistics, I mean, we waited we waited months and years for things that we shouldn't have waited months and years for. Okay. The, the only way to deal with it is to let them know that we're on a timeline and we need the records now. So, okay. and your honor, um, my client's willing to assist in any way possible, but you and I both know that nobody's going to help her out when she's in a CPS case. No, I understand. I understand. Um, the only, let me make my orders first. Is there anything else that you want to add, Ms. Roden? Um, yes, sir. Just that we've been out. We've seen the, um, we've seen Jayla in her home and we've met with the caregiver. We're also able to attend the FGC just because there's been a lot of discussion about her needs. You know, she was born premature. The placement did have some concerns with just some um, kind of continuous wet vocal sounds during feeding, some congestion that hasn't gone away. But just to kind of reassure the court, she does have, and I, I could be wrong, but I believe today she has her um, telemed with the neonatologist that's still following her. So there is um, her her, her doctor, because she was premature, that is still following her. She has an in-person, I think, in October. And I think that might be our best bet to ask for that developmental recommendation. I think if the neo, if Miss Baber can talk to the neonatologist today about um, the referral for the developmental pediatrician, I think rather than ECI, just because of the um, the issues with the birth being premature and some of the conditions of, of her birth, I think that a developmental pediatrician rather than like an ECI evaluation would be more beneficial for Jayla. So we'd like to see that happen. And we did discuss that uh, with Ms. Baver, the placement when we visited this week. Okay, so you, you want me to order a pediatrician evaluation, developmental pediatrician evaluation, which would be dependent upon a referral Correct. Yes, I think we could get that from the um, neonatologist that she sees today. Okay. Because I mean, I can obviously order the evaluation to be done, but that referral process out of my hands. So hopefully that that's how it'll go. Okay. For the purpose of the status hearing, court finds there's no any child heritage in this case. Court finds that the father, Mr. Robles, who is alleged has not yet been served. The court will only make an order as to the father that he must appear um, before the court prior to any visitation or contact with the child. Court finds that the current placement of the child with a relative in Uvalde, I know it's kind of a tenuous relative bond here, but that's what I'm calling it. In Uvalde County is safe, appropriate, meeting the needs of the child and the child's best interest to continue. Um, Court finds that all her medical is up to date. There's no delays at this time. I'm going to order that there be a, an evaluation by a developmental pediatrician. Again, I make that order knowing that I have no influence over the referral process. So however that needs to happen, it's got to happen. If y'all run into a problem and you need another order, something clarifying, let me know. Um, court finds that the current visitation schedule is appropriate. Uh, that no other family members have come forward to be studied at this time. Court finds that parties held a family group conference and created family plans of service, which were narrowly tailored to address the concerns that brought the child into care. Court finds those orders are in the best interest of the child and that the mother participated in the creation of the plan. She has not yet signed it, although she did review it. Let's make sure she gets a signature on there. Um, the court finds that... Um, Despite any reasonable efforts to uh, re reunify at this early stage, it's still not safe to return the child. Um, the mother has addressed her concerns. Unfortunately, her intention um, is to uh, relinquish. Now, let me talk about that. Um, it's best interest for the child to remain in the temporary managing conservatorship of the department. I'm I'm just concerned about how long we're going to use um this as a resource for something that could be privately done. So um, 
I understand the concern for keeping mom involved and I don't have any issue with that. Um, but if this, I'm going to trust the attorneys that appear before me all the time that if this gets to the realm of, you know, this is no longer a protection issue and it's a private issue. I, I need to know um, because it's, we got to make sure that I'm staying within the scope of what these cases are for. I, I support it a hundred percent if this is the way things need to go, but it needs to happen fast. So we need to get that gentleman served ASAP. We need to find out what he wants to do and then we need to go from there. So in that sense, I'm going to order that uh, the court have an update on what's happening with this case by November 1st. I want an update to the court by November 1st as to the status of this case and service on the father and intention um, so that we know what's going on. Our next hearing wouldn't be until January 2nd, 2025 at 10 a.m. January 2nd, 2025 at 10 a.m. I still have to give the admonishment that the state of Texas gives parents and CPS cases 12 months to demonstrate that you can provide a safe, stable, violence and drug-free home for your child. In the event you cannot do so, your rights to your child are subject to restriction or termination. The last thing I want to say is, Ms. Enriquez, if you change your mind, you need to make sure everybody knows that. And you need to make sure your attorney knows that. Because you have legal rights in this case. Um, but, you know, I, I don't have any problem supporting this plan if it's what you want. But um, you've got to know what you're doing. And you've got to make sure that you have all your answers and everybody knows exactly how you feel about it. Do you understand? It's star six to unmute. Ms. Enriquez, can you hit star six to unmute for me, please? Okay. Oh, sorry. Can you hear me now? Yes. Okay. Yes, it's most definitely what I want. Okay. Just make sure to continue to communicate with Ms. Harris, all right? Yes, for sure. Okay. Anything I failed to address, Ms. Dominguez? No, sir. Okay. Thank you all for your time and your service. Mr. Jett and Mr. Brandon, thank you both for standing in. And if nothing further, all parties are excused. Thank you, sir. You're welcome. That concludes the docket for today. I'll see you all next week.